Okay, hello everyone. All right, so let's talk about comparing strings. All right, so you can use the equality operator or the two, um, basically two equal signs to compare two strings to see if they're equal. So I'm going to declare two strings, for example, name one, and I'm going to initialize it to, let's say, Kakra, my name. And then I'm going to create another string, name two, and I'm going to initialize it to the string Kaki. So I'm going to create an if statement here and check to see if name one is equal to name two. You, could, you can do that with the two equal sign. So if name one is equal to name two, now I'm using two equal signs to compare. Right? If I use one equal sign, I'm assigning what's on the right to what's on the left. If I use two equal signs, I'm asking is what's on the right equal to what's on the left. All right, so so uh, that's very important. All right. So if name one is equal to name two, then we can write code that's going to execute. I'm going to print out a statement to say that. Well, let's just pass the argument into the print function. I'm going to print out a statement and say that name one is equal to name two. Let's compile this. I mean, run the program, um, and nothing happens. Nothing happens because name one is not equal to name two, right? This is only going to run if name one is equal to name two. Let's actually make, let's say, these two strings match. So name one is Kakra, name two is Kakra. Let's run the program, and it says Kakra is equal to Kakra. That's true. All right, so that's how you compare if two strings are equal. The way you compare if two strings are not equal, like for example, if you want to say something like, if name one is not equal to name two, the way you write that is with the exclamation sign here, like this. So if name one is not equal to, the exclamation sign means not. So if name one is not equal to name two, then let's print out the message and say name one is not equal to name two. By the way, when you pass argument into the print function by uh, this way, by default, they are displayed with a space separate in them. Right, so this is going to be displayed as name one, space, is not equal to space, name two. Because we passed three arguments, so they are all going to be displayed with a space separate in them. So because so this is how you say not equal to. So if name one is not equal to name two, then you're going to print this. This message is only, only going to be printed if name one is not equal to name two. We run the program, nothing happens because indeed, uh, indeed name one is actually equal to name two. The only time this print is when these, okay, when name one is not equal to name two. So let's change it to a point where name one is actually not equal to name two. Let's ch change it back to Kaki. Now we know name one is not equal to name two. This is actually saying if name one is not equal to name two, then print this. We're expecting to see this because actually name one is not equal to name two. Run the program and it says Kakra is not equal to Kaki, and that's true. So that's how you compare if something is not equal to something. Or one string is not equal to another string. Now you can also use relational operators, um, less the less than sign and the greater than sign to compare strings and see if one is less than or one is greater than the other. And I explain how that works, but you can do something like if name one is greater than name two, then display a message and say name one is greater than name two. Let's run the program and it says indeed Kakra is greater than Kaki. Now how does it know this? So, so Python has an encoding system called ASCII. Okay, so I actually have a page open here. This is actually a Java reference, but Python also has this encoding system. It's called ASCII. Okay, um, American, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. ASCII or ASCII, however you want to pronounce it, um, it's, it's, it's all fine. Okay, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And this is an encoding system where every character, each character, is matched with a certain code or a certain number. So anytime you store, let's say, a character in memory, it's actually st it's actually storing that number in memory. And anytime you try to print out what to store in memory, it, it looks for the character that is matched to that number and displays it. So each character is matched with a certain number using the ASCII encoding system. And you can see over here, uppercase A, for example, has a number 65. Don't worry about this link. I'll put the link. Okay, actually multiple links in the description, so you can have access to different different links uh, about um, ASCII, just in case one of them goes down. So, upper, uppercase A has the number 65, lowercase A has the number 97, and, and so on and so forth. You can see that a bunch of characters, even the open, um, close parentheses has a number 41. 
So the way it compares this to come to the conclusion that Kakra is greater than Kaki is this way. It, it compares it character in a character by character basis. It's actually called a lexicographical co comparison, right? But you don't actually need to know that term unless you're, you're really curious. So it checks the first character K and, re and realizes that, so uppercase K, it checks the first character's uppercase K with this and realizes they are the same, so it skips to the next one. Checks lowercase K and lowercase, sorry, lowercase A and lowercase A and realizes they are the same and moves on. Checks lowercase K and lowercase K and realizes they are the same and moves on. And then it gets to R and I. So let's see R and I. R is over here, which has a number of 114. And then I is over here, which has a number of 105. Now I, I hit the command key, in, so that's why you see both. So R has a number of 114, and I has a number of 105. 114 is actually greater than 105 because, right, 114 is greater than 105, right? Because R is greater than I, this entire string, name one, is indeed greater than name two. And that's why I was able to determine that name one was greater than name two and print the statement, right? You can do the same thing for let less than sign, um, and so on and so forth. So that's how these strings are compared. All right, so we'll talk more about you know the string comparison and and you know and you know yeah we'll talk more about it, but if you have any questions please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time with the next video. All right then, bye bye.